So a while ago I put up on my story about if you guys would like to see how I made my home gym um, and most people, pretty much everyone said yes, so here we are. Um, now that gyms are shut as well, I thought it'd be a good time to kind of let you see how I've done mine just in case anyone's interested in doing something like this themselves. So I'll take you through step by step how I turned my garage into a gym and just share some tips that I've learned along the way with you. started was that we had a garage that we weren't using it's a single garage and it was literally like a dumping ground the floor was horrible it was like this dusty concrete and it was just full of crap basically like spare boxes and stuff and then when lockdown happened and gym shut and everything the first lockdown happened and I realized I don't like training in my sitting room I had like minimal equipment I had like a couple of dumbbells a little barbell and, and some resistance bands and it got very boring very quickly. So I was like, right, I'm not risking this happening again. I'm gonna build a gym. Um, so I thought, let's go to the garage. The garage is a place we've got quite a bit of space and we don't use it anyway. So why not turn it into a gym just in case we go into a lockdown again, which did eventually end up happening. At least I'd have somewhere to train. So yeah, I literally thought, right, let's get it going. And here we are now, I've got the gym pretty much built and I'll talk you through it. So the first thing we did was sort the floor out. Like I said, it was really dusty. It was like this horrible concrete. And no matter how much we'd clean it, the dust would just keep coming back. So we ended up just jet washing the whole thing, cleaning all the dust out. And then I just got some floor paint. I think I got it off Amazon. And we just painted one coat um, on the floor just because I thought it would add a layer of protection to stop the kind of dust building up over time. Um, but I didn't want to just keep it as a concrete, I wanted to put some matting down. Now when it comes to mats, there's loads of different types you can get. The two most common ones are the ones I've got, which are the hard wearing rubber mats. And also these ones made out of foam, they're like, almost like jigsaws and they slot into each other. The reason I went for the hard wearing rubber mats was I just prefer them. So yeah, with the square jigsaw type ones, they're made out of foam and they don't take much of the impact and they get damaged over time. Plus, they're quite small, so you need to get a load of them to kind of fill up this space. And just over time, I know they wear out. Um, whereas these ones, they're quite thick. Um, they're very hard wearing rubber. They're actually made for stables, so for horses to walk on. So my logic was, if it can take a horse, it can take my weights. Plus, I, the, the type of training I do personally, I do a lot of deadlifting and heavy compound movements where I am dropping weights on the floor and slamming bars and everything. Um, so I wanted something that would protect the floor, but also protect my equipment. So I didn't want my bars to get damaged or anything like that if I do drop the weights. Um, so these are actually quite good. They're solid. Um, they come six foot by four foot and they're bloody heavy. Um, they weigh about 40 kilos per mat or something like that. Um, they can be a little bit more expensive, but I do think it's worth the investment. So a top tip that I've learned from putting these mats down is make sure you have a sharp Stanley knife. Um, they were a bit of a nightmare to cut just purely because they are so thick and heavy and it took almost a whole day to kind of cut them. Just the way our garage is as well, it's got lots of ins and outs everywhere. Um, so it was a bit of a nightmare to cut, but I do love them. I think it's the best choice I made. So the next thing I did was sort out this door. Um, our garage door was really ugly at the start, it was this nasty red colour which I just hated. Um, whereas when I look at it now, I love it. Uh, I'm a massive Dragon Ball Z fan, so I needed something personal in here just to give it that little touch. Um, and I love it, I've got a Super Saiyan with Vegeta that motivates me whenever I feel like not training. Um, so what we did was just get some matte black metal paint, uh, painted the whole door black, it had a nice smooth finish to it, and then I got my mate Paul over to come and spray paint Vegeta on there for me. And I, I love the result. I think it looks wicked. It's probably my favorite thing in this gym. So I used the gym a little bit with the minimal equipment that I did have. And I realized very quickly that I went with mirrors. Um, when I'm training, it's just good. It's a good way to check your form, see how you're doing. And it's also nice to see a little bit of a pump going on just to push you a little bit further. So I was like, I want some proper mirrors in here and I wanted the big ones. Um, so that's what I ended up getting next. I ordered two mirrors um, just to put where I knew the rack was going to go and where the treadmill was going to go. Um, these are also six foot by four foot, so they're quite big and they cover a lot of space. Um, so yeah, as well as kind of helping check form and looking at yourself while you're training, um, they actually open up the space a little bit more as well. Where I have only got a single garage, 
and just makes it look that little bit bigger and I, I love them, I think they're brilliant. Another quick tip with the mirrors is make sure you get the suction pad holders. So if you are getting big mirrors like I have, they're really hard to sometimes hold and maneuver, especially if you're trying to fit them into tight spaces. Um, with the suction pads, they're literally like these massive suction pads you stick on the mirror and you can literally hold them with handles and move the mirror about. It just makes life a lot easier. So the next thing I got was this bench. Um, with the bench, I wanted something that was quite stable but also adjustable. Um, st stability is key for me personally, just the type of training I do where I am doing heavier compounds like a bench press. Um, I didn't want it rocking around too much. Um, and I wanted it to be adjustable just so I can put it up at an incline if I want to. Um, do some shoulder presses and things like that. Um, so I wanted one that was adjustable and was stable and I found this one um, from Myrofit. Um, you can get cheaper ones, you can get more expensive ones. This one was about £150 um, but it does the job and I'm happy with it and it's actually quite easy to manoeuvre around as well. It's got wheels and all of that so it's actually a very good bench and I'm really happy with it. Then came the barbell. With a barbell you want to make sure you invest wisely, they will last you a long time. So what I've got here is a 7 foot Olympic barbell, um, it weighs 20 kilos, that's like the standard size. Um, I wanted to get a 7 footer because I know whatever rack I ended up getting I, knew, I know it's going to fit on there. Um, plus it's just what I'm used to using in gyms right, so I wanted to get something that I'm comfortable with. Now when I was looking for barbells um, we were actually coming up to our second lockdown. So prices were quite high. I actually got this one off Facebook Marketplace um, for about £90, which is actually quite cheap because barbells can go up to two, £300 pounds plus. Um, I am happy with it, but I think I will upgrade it in time. Uh, but you want to make sure you have a good quality barbell, just purely because if you are going to be putting quite a lot of weight on it over time, um, the cheaper ones, they do end up bending, which I've seen in gyms and stuff. So for the time being, it will do the job for me, but I will upgrade at some point. So once I got the barbell, I wanted to get some decent plates as well. Um, these are probably one of the more expensive things you're going to have to buy. They are sold usually by the kilo. So for example, if you've got 100 uh, kilos of weight in total and you're paying £3 per kilo, it's going to cost you 300 quid to get the whole set. Um, they can be quite expensive, upwards of five, six hundred pounds even, so you have to shop around a bit. Um, the ones I got, I wanted bumper plates um, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, um, they're very shock absorbing. So when I am doing deadlifts and things like that and dropping them on the floor, um, they will be able to take the impact without getting damaged themselves or damaging the bar or the floor or anything like that. Um, so it's kind of double protection. I've got the mats and now I've got the bumper plates. Another reason was with bumper plates, they're usually all the same size. So whether you've got a five kilo plate or a 25 kilo plate, um, the actual diameter of the plate will be the same, um, which helps when you're doing things like deadlifts Usually the 20 and the 25s are the biggest. If you had a really small plate and you tried doing a deadlift with it, it would be too low to the ground and it would be really awkward. So I like having them all the same size. I would recommend bumper plates as opposed to normal, just standard plates, um, just purely because they look better, they take more of the impact, and they're a lot more versatile than the normal plates. Again, when I was buying mine, there weren't that many around. Everything was sold out and everything was on back order. So the only ones I could find were these. And although they're doing the job for now, I do want to change them at some point, purely because these ones are quite chunky. They're a lot thicker than normal bumper plates. So, for example, a normal 20 kg plate would not be this thick. It would probably be about half of that size. Um, so they are a bit thick, which I don't really like about them. But again, they do the job for the time being. A top tip for you, once you've got your bar and your plates, um, think about getting some barbell clamps. They're just a lot easier to manoeuvre than the spring collars that you get. Um, I prefer them, you literally just snap it off, pull it out, push it back in and clip it on. And when you're changing weights around a lot, it just makes the whole job so much easier. Once you've got your plates, you want to make sure you have some storage for them. Unless you're a messy person and don't mind leaving them lying around everywhere, um, which I didn't want to do, get somewhere to store your plates. Now, I didn't have a rack at the time, and I know some racks come where you can actually store the plates on them. So where I didn't have one, um, there were two ways I could have gone about this. The first would have been a tree, which is where it stands vertically and you can place all your plates on them. Um, the second option is a toaster rack, like what I have got here. And it literally just holds the plates like a toaster would hold toast. Um, I got this one purely because at the time I was putting this all together, um, none of the trees were available. And I, would have, I think I would have preferred something standing, but after having the toaster rack, I kind of actually like it and it, it looks quite tidy. Um, so yeah, either way you want to go about it, it's just personal preference, but try and have somewhere where you can store your plates.
So I wanted a punch bag for cardio. We didn't have any sort of cardio equipment in here anyway. Um, and I used to do martial arts for quite a long time before and it's something that I really miss and I thought if I have my own space, I'd like to incorporate that somehow. Um, so I got a punch bag. I got this five foot RDX punch bag um, with a, a wall bracket. So it's hanging off the wall rather than the ceiling. Um, and I love it. it, it does the job, it's brilliant. The only thing I would say is a little tip for you, if you do have a brick wall like I do, when I was punching the bag and it was bouncing off the wall, it was making the bricks kind of crumble and it was getting a lot of dust on the floor. So all I did was get a few little um, foam pads to stick on the wall behind it, just to take the impact of it a bit and stop the kind of crum uh, crumbling happening. Uh, but yeah, love it, can't go wrong with a punch bag. One of the main things I wanted at the focal point of this gym to be was a good power rack. Um, again, the type of training I do, I use power racks on a daily basis. You can literally train your whole body with one of these. You can hit every single muscle group. You can do your squats, your benching. Um, it's even got the pull-up bar here that you can do pull-ups with. Every, you can literally do everything with a decent rack. Um, with a rack, again, they vary quite a lot. You can get quite cheap ones for a couple of hundred quid. You can get expensive ones that are one, two, three thousand pounds even. So they, they do vary a lot. Um, I went with this one from Myrafit purely because I know for their price, the quality is very good. This one was only 400 pounds and it's their new M200 model. Um, and it's brilliant, I love it. It's very sturdy, does not move. I do pull-ups on it and everything, it does not budge. I've not bolted it into the ground, but you do have that option if you want extra stability. Um, and yeah, for its price, it's solid. It comes with the J clips, it comes with the safety um, bars on the side and all of that. And it just looks nice. They have the options of like getting an all black one or an orange one. I went for the orange just to give it a pop of colour in here. I just think otherwise if everything was all black it would look a bit dull. And uh, I'm really happy with it. It looks amazing. I've been using it every day for the last couple of weeks now since I've got it. And it's amazing. I love it. So with the rack, um, you are able to buy different attachments for it. Like a landmine to do your T-bar rows and things like that. You can buy um, dip handles to kind of do all of that. I actually opted for rings. I like training with these gymnastics rings and I, I use them in gyms quite often. So I thought I want to get a set for myself. They're quite cheap. I think they were like 20 quid or something like that off Amazon. Um, but they're solid. I literally just hang them from the rack and you can do so many things on here. You can do your dips, you can do pull, lots of pulling movements. Um, there's literally so much you can do. And for their price, you can't really go wrong with them. I've got these other like little random weights that I had. These are probably like over 15 years old, just a couple of dumbbells, a few different bars and those old school metal plates. Um, they're doing the job for the time being, but eventually I do want to get like a full dumbbell rack. It just makes life easier. A uh, bit better quality as well. I mean, like I said, these have been with me since I was probably about 15 years old. Um, so they do the job for now, but I do want to upgrade at some point. So once I had all the main parts of the gym done, I just wanted to get a few little bits to put around and kind of make things nicer and tidy them up a bit. Um, so I started with these like little wall hooks. Um, I think they're actually shelf holders, but they come in handy for like hanging things like resistance bands, skipping ropes, things like that. Um, they're quite sturdy and it just makes it a little bit tidier when you have got things like that hanging around everywhere. I also ended up getting this storage unit. This is just from Ikea. It wasn't too expensive. Just to put like random bits in, like I've got boxing gloves in there, a few little pads and things like that. Um, it just has these little slide out boxes. It's just somewhere to kind of put it neatly, uh, tuck it all away and it just looks kind of tidy that way. We finished off our gym with this treadmill. We've got the Reebok GT40S. Um, we just wanted a treadmill, just something to do cardio with. Um, I, don't, I didn't want to get like a rowing machine or a bike or anything like that. I just thought a treadmill is a little bit more versatile. Um, so we got this. It ended up being a little bit more expensive than we thought at around £550, purely because treadmills were just out of stock everywhere. Um, a lot of the things we wanted was just out of stock. And we actually had to wait almost, I think it was five or six weeks for this to even come. Um, so this was probably the last piece of the puzzle that kind of finished it all off. So when I was editing this video, I realized I didn't actually film uh, any sort of ending or outro for it. Um, but I just quickly wanted to say um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and you found it useful or picked up some tips for it. Um, if any of you are planning on making your own home gym and you need any help or advice from me or want to know where I sourced any sort of equipment from anything like that, um, either leave a comment below or drop me a message and I'm more than happy to help you guys. In the meantime, please don't let lockdown and all of the stuff that's going on uh, ruin your health or your fitness levels or anything like that. Uh, keep trying to stay active, keep exercising and I'll speak to you soon.